but like it started getting smaller and smaller and I started sitting on it, started sleeping on it, smaller and smaller till it was down there to where what I was born with. That's why I'm going back. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, what, when you seen to this point, it was like, man, hold on, what, what is my investment? What is your, what are your initial thoughts like? Was it even worth it, or like? <clears throat> I feel like the only way surgery is worth it if you're gonna really change your life. Real life. You know, you mentioned, of course, your surgery, man, your post-op, you got the BBL. For those young girls at home, because, you know, again, I think you got at a time to where it wasn't so faux pas. It was like, you know, you would talk about it, those ass, and like, you know, some people say it's natural, but you got at a time to where it was coming into that wave of everybody getting it. Um, what was your journey like for your BBL? Who'd you go to? Um, how was it coming home? Did you have to like lay on your stomach the whole way back? So my journey, um, when I woke up from the BBL, I was screaming like, oh my God, what the fuck did I do? Cause it hurt it so bad. It was the worst pain I ever had in my life. No lie. Oh, are you serious? Worst pain I ever experienced. Like nonstop, just or it came, like it was, come in waves. So, so listen, once you wake up, you have to go get your own prescription. They prescribe you Percocet or hydrocodone. Mind you, you have to go and get your own prescription. You got to wait 30, to, 30 minutes to an hour for them to, um, give you the prescription so you're sitting there hurting for that long and this pain is unfucking bearable so you're just sitting there waiting on your medicine when you get your medicine it's kind of cool i'm not gonna lie once i got my medicine i was walking around same day blah blah but it was once i got home it was cool as long as i had that little fire on as soon as i take that fire off it's like i swell up i start hurting it was just a pain that I don't want to go through again, but I'm going to one more time. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to one more hey. time, but it, it's an unbearable pain. And if you can't deal with pain, then I advise you just get in the gym because that shit hurts. They say it takes at least an entire year for you to actually heal from a BBL. It takes, and my first mistake with my BBL was... Okay, so I got my BBL, but I was still living a fast life. When you get a BBL, you have to slow down because literally you don't heal to a year. So I was outside at hostings and shit at six months. And the thing that happens is what I learned is once you get out too soon, you will lose fat. Like really, you realistically, you supposed to keep that faha on and keep eating healthy for at least six months for that fat to stay in place. What I did is I slept on my hips, I slept on my butt, I was going outside, I was eating whatever more. I started sitting on my butt at five weeks. So once you start sitting on your butt, you start sleeping on your hips, I started losing my hips, losing the fat in my butt probably after two months. But mind you, I had already, I always had a shape my whole life, so it was like I didn't lose my shape, but when I first got surgery, my butt was ridiculous. I remember I did an interview with Terry Blue. He said, your butt is too big. Like, it's too big. They put too much. <laughs> like, because it was swole, really. I had just got it, and it was so swollen. It was huge. But, like, it started getting smaller and smaller, and I started sitting on it, started sleeping on it. Smaller and smaller. So it was damn near to where what I was born with. That's why I'm going back. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, what, when you seen to this point, it was like, man, hold on, what, what is my investment? What is your, what are your initial thoughts like? Was it even worth it or like? <clears throat> I feel like the only way surgery is worth it if you're gonna really change your life. And when I say really change your life, it's I mean really change your eating habits, really wake up and exercise every day. I mean, it's hard maintenance. People think, oh, I'm just gonna get surgery and I'm gonna be fine. No, you have to. That shit is so much maintenance. You got to work out. You got to eat healthy. I ain't going to lie. With lipo, you damn near got to go back every year. Because if you don't change your eating habits and work out, you're going to gain it back. I know somebody that goes every year. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have to go back damn near every two years. So you, if you're not going to change your life, it's, it's, it's not a good investment. You're going to keep mm. wasting money. Now, you, you're attractive. Like you are, Your face card is already good. So... Why? Why keep going back? Why put yourself through that? Like you don't when you don't really 
Me. So I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a lot some people, some people, they life is too busy to in, invest their time into working out because I have tried to get into the gym life, but the gym life is a, it's like a, it's like a, a job. Like you gotta really invest your time in it. And if you, when you're trying to be an artist, you're running a business, you're doing this, you're doing that. It's kind of hard to be like, I'm living this healthy lifestyle. I'm gonna be fit, boom, boom. So you'll say, you know what? I got the money. I'm gonna go get surgery. Fuck it. That's that's most females right yeah. now. Now, uh, just just thinking in hindsight, let's say you decide, you know what? I'm Nina the house mom now. I don't need no titties no more. I'm finna take this ass out. I'm just finna be Nina. What do you think Carter Park would think about that? So the thing about Carter is Carter has been institutionalized down there his whole life. <laughs> like even before meeting me, I'm 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 I think he did like seven years mm -hmm. if you put it all together. Seven years TDC, yeah, I was seven years to TDC, Yeah. <laughs> so he's been in jail his whole life. And one thing about it, I have an uncle who's my best friend. Like my best friend, we like this. That's my daddy's little brother. And he's been in jail his whole life. So I always have hung around men. I always have been around guys, all my friends. I most have been guys. So I kind of understand Carter to where it's like I can't expect him to really act his age because he's been so institutionalized his whole life. So mm. when he gets out, he's like he's trying to catch up on them years that he mm. lost. Because mind you, I have an uncle who's my best friend who lives the same way. He's, he's up in age, but he's still living his life like he's a certain age because he didn't get to live that. So the thing about Carter is I try to I try to understand him on a level like, yeah, you missed these years. So, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm still in my twenties. We still lit. Like I don't expect you to be an old man. Don't expect me to be no old ass woman. We still living. That's nice facts. So, you know. I'm curious, when it comes to BBL, um, and this is for the ladies out there that's thinking about getting one or just recently got one. Um, how quickly after BBL can like, you know, sexual intercourse come back into play? Like how quickly does that happen? So Carter was the first person not that, yeah. So I started maybe, you're not supposed to before six weeks, realistically, but I started at four or five weeks. So you got to go just, go just bear in it real. But it, it was so unbearable when I did it at like four or five weeks. I only did it one time and I didn't do it again until after my six weeks. Cause it hurt it. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> uh, for him, hopefully, it's worth it. It hurt it.